So, okay, so let's do this question. So this is a relatively simple circuit analysis question. Uh, I say simple in the sense that you don't actually have to use Kirchhoff's uh, rules, you know, junction rule and the loop rule to solve this circuit. All you have to do is, you know, simplify the circuit. In fact, that's a question A. You know, it says find the equivalent resistance of the circuit, uh, not including this internal resistance. So all you have to do is think about, okay, can I somehow simplify the, these set of registers into a single equivalent resistance? And the answer is, yes, you can. Um, and the, the, that's a, what I mean, it's a relatively simple question because you can answer it by, well, I'm gonna add these two registers together, um, call it um, R12, and each equivalent resistance will be given by adding these two in parallel. I'll do that here. And I'm going to add these registers in parallel. Let me call that R34. And once I've done that, you know, replace this uh, 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 one with a single register R12. Replace this with a single register R34. Then I have one, two, three registers in series. So, uh, so for the final answer, all I have to do is add these in series. Um, call that R, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. And that'll be the answer. So uh, let me do this uh, in Sage Method. So the main formula I'm going to be using is the formulas for adding registers in a series, which is easy. You know, you just add that and so on. You can actually add more than two. Um, or um, adding registers in parallel. Uh, which I think it's actually better expressed in this form. Instead of saying the resistance is equal to something, you say that the the one over the resistance, the equivalent resistance is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 and so on. Um, so, you know, if you really do want to say, um, do want to have a, just a formula for the R equivalent parallel. The easiest thing to do is really just to take this expression and uh, put it over the reciprocal. Uh, that's what I have to do. In fact, so uh, I'm going to use the Sage method from here on. That'll help me cut down on a, a lot of um, busy work that's just plugging in numbers. So, um, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna define my, my variables variables um, R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. And I don't think I have to declare the, the ones that I'm going to be defining because I'll write those symbolically. I can do it this way. I can say R12 is equal to uh, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 reciprocal of that. Uh, that will be a valid symbolic expression, you know. Um, and R34 will be similar, 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 raised to the power of minus 1. And finally, R5 just stands on itself. So R equivalent, or R12345, is R12 plus R34 plus R5. So that's it. If you wanted a symbolic answer, then this would be it. Uh, one of the advantages of doing this in Sage Math is I can use a substitution syntax to logically plug in the numbers. So I can just look up, okay, R1 is equal to 9 ohm, 9. R2 is equal to 18 ohm, 18. R3 is equal to 10 ohm, 10. R4 is also equal to 10 ohm, 10. R5 is equal to 8. And I can imagine someone being able to do this calculation more quickly through some clever mental math, which is fine, you know, don't let me discourage you from doing that. Uh, but this is kind of the easy way to questions like this uh, in a programmatic, systematic way that uh, does relate to the core concept. 19. So given that 19 ohm of equivalent resistance, the current out of the battery must be, uh, now it says do not <laughs> ignore the internal resistance. So um, I'm looking at uh, internal resistance plus R12345. So what I'm going to say is, okay, internal resistance is 1 ohm. That plus uh, what we had here. Or, you know, I, mean, I, I can do that in my head. That's 20. Uh, so, so 20 ohm, that's not the answer. That's the total equivalent resistance. So the current you get um, out of this battery of 30 volts 
through tenuum resistance would be Ohm's law, the voltage divided by the resistance, or uh, uh, 3 over 2, that's I think 1.5, 1.5 ampere. Okay, uh, it says find the potential drop across each register. Ah, that's going to be an interesting question. So this part of the question is asking for um, voltage drop across registers. Whenever you hear voltage drop or voltage change across a register, you should be thinking of delta V is equal to current times resistance. Sometimes the important question will be which resistance. Like if you did, uh, so we just found the current 1.5 ampere. If you did 1.5 ampere times, I don't know, 9 ohm, you will get the wrong answer. So it's worthwhile to just take a little bit of time to think through which resistance would give you the correct uh, value of delta V here. Here, the correct resistance is this equivalent resistance. Because uh, if you are considering either of the registers on the branch, then you really need to split up the current into the correct amount that they go. Um, the step that saves doing that is just using the equivalent resistance. So, um, so I have the current, 1.5 ampere. So that times the equivalent resistance. I think I forgot that. Let me look it up. Um, so I have that's R12. Let me plug in the values of, actually I can copy and paste the substitution of the resistances. Okay, so that's the equivalent resistance there, 6 ohm. I think that makes sense. So if you take that times 1.5 ampere, that will give you the voltage change, 9 volts. Uh, let me just make this a little smaller so I don't have to keep bringing up the other thing. Okay, 9 volts. Good. And across R3 and R4, um, here again, you use the equivalent resistance, R3, 4. So I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, take the R3 for resistance, which should be 5. Um, let me double check. Which should be 5. That times 1.5 will give you uh, the voltage drop across here. 7.5 across R5. That's easy. You know, 8 times 1.5. Oh, I can't even do that in my head. Uh, that's uh, 12, I think. Yes. <laughs> and uh, double check, oh wait, um, across R, I still need that. So one ohm, uh, so that's going to be 1.5. So the double check is when you add these all up, you should get 30 back from you know, Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule. So let's see, uh, 9 plus 16.5, um, 28.5, yeah, 30. Okay, so they should be all right. Oh yeah, they sh should have added up to the value of epsilon or, um, or the the electromotive force or the voltage of the battery. Okay, it says find the current through R1 and R2. Oh, so I guess you actually have to do it. So now that you know the voltage drop, the way you can find the current through each of the branch is to take this voltage drop and divide it by the resistance of each of the branch. So my voltage drop was 9 volts. That means, oh, through the 9 ohm register, I must have 1 ampere of current. And through the 18 ohm um, register, so, you know, uh, 9 volts divided by 18 ohm, that's a 0 0.5. So you must have 0 0.5 ampere of current. And that makes sense. Uh, these two added together at this junction will give you 1.5 ampere incoming current. That's consistent with the Kirchhoff's junction rule. Again, noting that we didn't actually need to use it. Uh, R3 and R4, because their resistances are the same, they'll just uh, evenly split. So it should be 0 0.75 and 0 0.75. And finally, what is the percentage of total power supplied by the battery that is dissipated? As into so you can calculate the um, power that's dissipated by the internal resistance of the battery. So which would be, uh, let me just declare my symbol here. I'm going to use J because I think uh, I don't want to overwrite the I in this um, program. Um, so the power should be current times, uh, wait, no, it should be current squared <laughs> times the resistance or um, R in this case. I think I actually have to declare R as well. Um, so, so that's the expression for power. And uh, you actually have the numbers. I can plug them in. Um, the current we worked out was 1.5 ampere. And the 
the internal resistance you, you are given that one uh, one ohm. Um, so when you calculate the power, it's 2.25 watt, uh, W A T T. Now that's not the question it's asking. It's asking for what's the percentage of the total power. So you need to know the how much total power is dissipated, and you could calculate the power dissipated through each of these uh, register parts, and there's an easier way. So when you think about the expression for power, you've seen me write these uh, three different looking expressions. Power, just from the basic definition of power uh, as a rate of change of energy, it's current times voltage, it's related to charge times voltage being the potential energy, um, you can also rewrite this using Ohm's law as either I squared R or V squared over R. So, you know, you think through each of these expressions and think about which quantity will give you the, uh, the relevant total power most directly. And in my opinion, once you know the current through here, you know, current is 1.5 ampere, then the most direct way to get that answer is to use this because you already know the voltage of your power source. So you can do just the current times the voltage. You can even do that in your head. That's a, uh, uh, well, but you can actually use it in your 45, <laughs> it's 45 uh, uh, watt. So uh, when it's asking for the percentage of total power, it's asking uh, what is this as a percentage of 45. So let me take that uh, previous output, divide by, by, by 45 and then multiply by 100. Uh, so five percent. I guess that sounds right. Five percent. Yeah, I think that sounds right. So total of five percent of total power supplied the battery is dissipated in the internal resistance, which might be typical. I don't know. These resistances are kind of low for a battery circuit. It's gonna drain the battery really quickly. Let's submit and see. So you know, this is a long. It can be a tedious question, but in terms of uh, circuit knowledge, you have to use it's. Kind of simple, not complicated. Um, so I think that's uh, everything. Um,